John. Yes, I'm sad not to be there in person, especially now that I hear about the drinks reception, but um, it is really wonderful to, uh, to see you all in the room and online. Um, so yeah, hello from Brussels on behalf of the Green European Foundation. Um, we're very happy to be organizing today's event uh, together with Green Foundation Ireland and Greenhouse Think Tank. Um, and before we dive into all of the, the sessions that David just laid out, I just wanted to take a moment to highlight kind of the European wide debate that we are really trying to foster here. So Jeff as a European political foundation explicitly has as its mission um, to be a laboratory of ideas, uh, forward looking ideas, but also to build these cross border European debates on the big topics that define our time, the big challenges, the big opportunities. Um, so for us, the European project is very much about events like these happening all across Europe rather than you know top-down technocratic debates in Brussels. Um, so I'm really excited to hear um, what, what comes out of today. Um, I mean, in this moment of multiple crises, um, I think thinking together as Europe is more important than ever, whether we're talking about COVID-19, the war in Ukraine, energy crisis, climate emergency, um, none of these challenges really have national level, you know, can, can only be addressed at the national level. They require collective buy-in and also a democratic conversation um, to take place. So that brings us to today, uh, to our topic of rethinking energy demand and the, and the project that this is all a part of. Um, I think when the project started um, at, well, early this year, um, together with our UK, Irish and Belgian partners, um, none of us could really have imagined that, you know, these, these conversations around energy sufficiency, large scale reduction plans in our consumption, and even topics like rationing um, and power cuts would suddenly be on, on the evening news. So the war in Ukraine um, was definitely a wake up call for many European countries that our ever growing demand for energy and materials carries certain risks for the environment, but also for the people, for our welfare. Um, so earlier today, we kicked off today's activities with uh, the report launch and a, a webinar on sufficiency policies for a post-growth world. Um, we had a panel of speakers from the UK, Belgium, Germany, Greece, France, some of you might have attended online as well. Um, and we had participants from across Europe. And what I really took from it, and what I also take from the report we launched today and hope will be reflected in some of the conversations and discussions, um, is the importance for the green movement to be at the forefront of this conversation because these, these crises show that things like reducing energy demand will eventually have to happen one way or another. And even other groups and, and political families are starting to realize that. But we need to be at the forefront of those discussions precisely to ensure that they happen in a just, in a redistributive and in a democratic way. Um, so I wish you all an inspiring few hours. I'll be uh, following along online um, and do, yeah, read the report, uh, talk to the authors in the room um, and uh, hopefully stay in touch for, for further conversations across Europe on this uh, very important topic. So thank you, Davey. Thanks, Ian. Um... So it's fantastic to have um, Jonathan and Peter from the Greenhouse with us to launch this paper and to go into it. Uh, Jonathan.